Now it's a good time to talk about how to take input from the user. I know you have been waiting for this for a long time because we have talked about different concepts and maybe you had this question in your mind. Okay, everything looks good. We talked about objects, classes, inheritance, polymorphism, but how do I take the input from the user? Because in between as well, I've mentioned that what if this value comes from the user? And at the same point, you might be thinking, how? Okay, so let's try to answer that in this video. So basically, if you want to print something on the console, see this is a console, right? On the right hand side, whatever you have here, it's a console. And if you want to print something on the console, what you do is you say system.out.println, right? Now you have to understand this first. See, println is a method. Now, if I ask you just to think about it, println method belongs to which class or it's a method of which class? Now, this is an interview question. A lot of people say that it is a class, it's, it's a method of system class, but that's not the case. See, if I press my control button on Windows and command on Mac, and if I click on this, if I hover on this print ln, if I click on it, you can see it gives you its definition. It says print ln and print ln method belongs to print stream. So print stream is a class and print ln is a method of print stream. Okay, that means if you want to call print ln, you first have to create the object of a print stream. But okay, don't worry, you don't have to create the object. The beauty is, the object is actually already created. Can you see that? It, we already have an out object. And that's why we are using this object from a long time. So out is the object of print stream. But this object is created as a static variable inside the system class. Okay, it's, a, it's, it's inside system class. Now, since it is static, so we can use out with the help of system.out. And once you have the access to the out object, you can call println. And that's what we have here, system.out.println. So if I want to print something, if I want to print, let's say, hello, of course I can do that and I can just compile this code and run, it perfectly works. Now, let's say I want to take the input from the user. I have to say, hey, enter a number. Now, in this case, when a user enters the number, how will I accept it? Now, that's tricky, right? So what do you think, what could be a solution here? What is the method we have to use? Now, by any chance, if you're coming from C, C++, we use C out, C in, in C++. Uh, we use printf, scanf in C, right? And it's straightforward, right? They are straightforward methods. But in terms of Java, when you say system.out.println, it prints, right? It is out. And that's why it says out. It is outputting. So to input, there should be in, right? Let's see, do we have in? So if I go to system, and if I scroll down to out, yes, there is an out here and need to find in. There is also in, if you can see. In is a static method and this object in is of type input stream. Oh, we do have it. Okay, so if I go back here and if I try to use system dot in dot, oh, there should be a method, right? Because to print, we have a print method. For the input, there should be read. Oh, there's read, okay. Great, it works. You can see we have a read method. And read method returns a int value, right? It returns an int value, that's great. The only thing is it might throw an exception. And if you can see which exception, it's IO exception. And we know what is IO exception now. So you have a choice, you can handle the exception. And this is checked exception, which means you have to handle it. It's your job to handle it. Compiler will force you to do that. So you can either use try catch here or you can be evil and you can say throws exception. Not a good idea, but it works for this code since we are learning so we can do that. But when you are making an application, don't do that. Try to use try catch here. Okay, so system.in.read will give you the integer value. That's great. What I will do is I will just put that in a variable called num because it returns a value, right? Read will give you the value. So you have to put that in a variable. And once you have the variable, you can perform any operation if you want or you can print it. That's your choice. Let's go back here and compile no problem. If you try to read, oh, it says enter a number. I'm excited. Let's enter five and enter. Oh, we got five, but we also got three. Now that's weird. I don't want three there. Okay, let's try another number. Let's see with three. Oh, we got 51. What is happening here? The thing is, the system.in.read actually gives you the ASCII value for the number you enter. Example, let's say, if I run this code once again, and if I enter capital A, it prints 65. So every character on your keyboard has an ASCII value. The same way for the capital A, it is 65. For small a, it is 97, I guess. For zero, it is 48. Example, if I enter the value zero, it is 48. For value one, it is 49. So list goes on, right? 
So basically it is not giving you the exact value, it is giving you the ASCII representation of that value. Okay, that is tricky actually. So what one solution you have is what if you subtract the number by 48 or maybe it's not, not 48, you are subtract the number by 48, not by 48 minus num. It is num minus 48. And now if you try to run this code, you have to first compile this code, compile and run. Let's enter number five. Oh, it works now. Can you see that? Because now we don't want ASCII value. We want whatever ASCII value you're getting, we're subtracting it, right? So if I enter six, okay, if I enter six, it works, okay? Now it works. So we were able to manage it, right? This is not an ideal way of taking the input, but that's what Java provides you. Java says, we will give you this method read, which will give you ASCII value. What if you want to get a bigger number? What if you want to get, example, if I give a bigger number here, uh, let's say 55, you can see it only gives you five because it reads only one character at a time. Oh, that means if you want to read multiple characters, we have to use a loop. But let's not do that. Let's not take headache off by ourselves. So Java says, don't worry. I will give you a specialized class to work with this. So instead of using system.in.read, we have a special option, which is there's a concept called buffered reader. Now buffered reader is basically a class which works with IO, okay? And it belongs to a package java.io. So if you want to use buffered reader, you need to import this package. So IO exception, buffered reader both belongs to IO package. Now, whatever class we have used till now, most of them belong to java.lang, which is auto import. But if you want to use any class which is not there, you have to explicitly mention the package name. Okay, so let's create object of buffer reader. So we'll say buffer reader bf is equal to new buffered reader. Okay, but what next? The thing is, if you want to read, we have to actually pass the in object. Can you see that? If I go to constructor of buffer reader, buffer reader constructor says, okay, I will work. But first you have to pass an object of a reader. Okay, now which reader it is talking about? So basically, there is one more class which you have to work with. I know this code will be a bit lengthy because that's how Java has implemented it. But let's use it. In fact, there is a better way as well, which we'll see in the next topic. So we have to pass the input stream reader. So we have to get object of input stream reader. Let's say in in this case. And I will say new input stream reader. Okay. And whatever object you are creating here, just pass it here. Your job is done. But there's a problem. You can see input stream reader also needs an object of input stream. Okay, in this case, what you can do is, it needs object of input stream, right? And if you remember, when we talked about in object, it is input stream object. So what you can do here is, you can pass system.in. I know it is a bit complex, and that's why in later version of Java, they have introduced better solution. But I just want to show you this option as well, which was there and people were using it for a long time, okay? so. You have to say input stream reader in, and then uh, you have to get object of input stream reader. Then you can create object of buffer reader by passing the object of input stream. Now, once you have it, you can create a num variable and you can use buffered reader to read a line. So you can see we have a read line. The only thing is read line will give you the string. Okay, we don't want string, we want integer. So to do that, we have to use a special class called integer.passInt, which we have seen already. And integer.passInt, not in. Okay, so whatever string you're getting, basically you will get a number in the string format. You just have to convert that into integer. And now if I try to print number, it should work. Otherwise we have wasted so much of time. Compile and run. Let's enter 55, it works. Doesn't matter how big your number is, it will accept it. You can see we got the number. So basically this is how you take the input from the user. There's another way which I will show you in some time, but the important thing is whenever you use buffer reader, it is trying to access input stream reader. And the beauty is buffer reader can take the input from anywhere, not just from system keyboard. It can also take input from the file, from the network. And you can mention wherever you want to take the input from, you can mention it here. You can mention the file, you can mention all the other, other stuff. Now the thing is, buffer reader, whenever you're using it, it's actually a resource. Now why it's a resource is because, let's say when you are trying to read from a file, of course file is a resource, right? And when you open the file, it is your responsibility to close it. When you open the network, it is your responsibility to close it. When you open the database connection, it is your responsibility to close it. How will you close it? So once your job is done, at the end, you can just come back here and say bf.close. Can you see that we have a close method? So it is always a good idea to close the resources. Again, it's not compulsory, it will not give you error, 
But a good practice is close resources. Okay, otherwise you are leaking resources, you are leaking the file, you are leaking data, you are keeping the resource busy. And the thing is, if you are using a resource, no one else can use it. Okay, so don't do that. Don't be an evil person here. So you close the resource. Okay, so this is how you take the input. And I know you are waiting for the better way of doing this. Let me show you a simple way. So instead of using buffer reader, we can use one more technique here, which is a scanner. Now scanner was introduced later in Java. So if you can see, if I go to scanner class, scanner class was introduced in 1.5. So people before 1.5 were using buffer reader. I know bad days, but yeah, we got scanner here. We can create object of scanner, let's say SC. We can use any object name, doesn't matter. And we can say scanner. Now scanner takes the system.in, that's constant because we have to mention from where you're getting the input. Are you getting the input from the console? Are you getting the input from the file? You have to mention that here. And once you get the scanner object, the beauty is in scanner, you can say sc dot. And there are so many methods. You can see that we got next line, which will give you string. Uh, you can say next int. Oh, that means it automatically gives you integer value. You can also say next short. Uh, it will, it has so many methods, but we, we are going to use next int, not next line. Because if you use next line, you have to pass that into integer. So let's use next int, which will not create a lot of headache for us and run, enter a number 567 and we got it. So I know scanner looks much better than buffer reader, but yeah, it was introduced later. So people before that were using buffer reader, so we have seen it. In fact, in the next video, we'll try to understand more about how do you close resources, okay? And that's why we are teaching this concept now because now we know what is IO exception and all those stuff. So yeah, you have two choice of taking the input from the user. You can use buffer reader or you can use a scanner class.